Ferrari had to make a late change to its 2019 F1 livery ahead of the Australian Grand Prix after its Mission Winnow branding caused unrest due to links to a tobacco company. McLaren ended up also making a change to its A Better Tomorrow British American Tobacco branding just to be safe, bringing back memories of the days when multiple teams on the grid carried cigarette branding and had to make changes when racing in certain countries where tobacco advertising was banned. Ferrari also had to make a last minute change in 1999 when F1 was caught out by a ban ahead of the Belgian Grand Prix and the red cars ran the official F1 logo instead of its title sponsor on that occasion. That one hasn't made our list, but here are the more common approaches taken by the teams that did make the cut. Number seven, leave it blank. Not much imagination required here, but if in doubt, just remove the words and logos. Fortunately, this was never a particularly popular option for the teams, and it was usually only called upon in countries that were being particularly strict about tobacco advertising at the time, which often ruled out some of the more creative ways of getting around the ban, which we're gonna see later in the list. Number six, logos. We've given this one quite a low position because we're not quite sure how the teams and their sponsors so often got away with it. Whenever a team went for the logos approach to their non-tobacco liveries, it was often pretty obvious who the sponsor was. Some were more obscure than others, but let's face it, this design didn't exactly leave any doubt about who the sponsor was. Number five, poke fun at it. We're disappointed there weren't more examples to go in this entry, and for that reason this can't place higher on our list. Zack Speed switching its logos to East was fun in the 1980s, and it also used the same stickers for the first Hungarian Grand Prix in 1986 to acknowledge F1's first venture behind the Iron Curtain. Williams got cheeky by replacing its sponsor with question marks in 1997, and once it was out of France, it even felt brave enough to put the first letter in front of the logo. BAR went for look-alike branding early in the 2000s, while one of Jordan's final attempts to cover up its tobacco branding simply involved removing certain letters to create new words. As we'll find out shortly, some of its previous attempts were much better than that. Number four, driver names. This one only became popular towards the end of the 1990s, although Williams used it at the start of the decade as well. McLaren was the most prolific team to run its drivers' names in big letters on the side of its cars, probably helped by the fact it had drivers with short first names. Driver names made occasional appearances elsewhere on the grid, with Jordan even putting a snake-like spin on its 1997 lineup at the German Grand Prix. Number three, random words. Racing, team spirit, and even blue world all seem a bit meaningless, so you're probably wondering why this one is so high on the list. Credit for that must go to Jordan, which led the way with how to handle rebranding when you couldn't run your tobacco sponsor's name on the side of your car. It started with Bitten and Hisses in 1997, and while it was a shame the snake livery only lasted one year, the buzzing hornet's identity that followed developed a cult-like following and tied in with the most successful period in the team's history. The hornets were replaced for 2001 and nothing Jordan came up with after that was anywhere near as evocative. Number two, barcodes. This was a pretty common approach through the 80s and 90s, with significant sponsors on front-running teams being disguised in this way, and that's why it's so high on our list. It's a pretty simple approach, really. If you can't write the name of the company on your car, just replace the word with some solid blocks. In fact, it could be argued that most of the early attempts at this design didn't really resemble a barcode at all and it was only the later efforts by BAR and then Ferrari, which were eventually outlawed as advertising laws became more stringent, that really looked like barcodes. Number one, team names. Simple but effective. This one really took hold in the 1990s, and it tops our list because of the sheer number of teams that used it as the solution to their tobacco livery conundrum when arriving in a country where their backers logos were banned. It's about quality as well as quantity, with big hitters like McLaren, Williams and Benetton all running their names on their cars when they were the dominant forces on the F1 grid. Which were your favourite livery tweaks in F1 history? Let us know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to see more great motorsport videos from Autosport.